Over the past several years, a number of individuals have presented in uh, healthcare and mental health clinics for hypersexual behavior. And we've really kind of tried to understand what's going on with these individuals. A number of people with good intent have tried to suggest various types of ideas, including uh, s the notion that these individuals have uh, deficits or uh, problems in the brain that may be explaining this particular behavior. And although these people are well-meaning, I think it's really premature at this point to conclude anything about the brain of an individual with hypersexual behavior as opposed to someone who doesn't have that particular issue. In essence, uh, some people are, are taking studies that have been done on completely different populations. In some cases, studies that have been done on animals, let alone humans, and concluding that what happened in that study in a rat laboratory or with methamphetamine dependent patients somehow generalizes to hypersexual patients. And we can't do that. We have to replicate those studies in patients seeking help for hypersexuality in order to draw those conclusions. And those ideas might help us generate hypotheses and, and ideas for research that we could do, but we can't conclusively say at this point that in fact what happens with that population is true for hypersexual patients. And so we have to be very careful in making those conclusions at this point and realize that anybody who's advocating for those types of things is probably, uh, it's based on their own opinion rather than uh, science that's, uh, that's empirically supporting those particular perspectives.